Okay, so we're recording. Yep, welcome everyone to our Chaos Weekly meeting, November 17, 2019. I shared the minutes document in the chat. Please do help with the minutes so that we have a complete record of what we talk about. I will help. Excellent, thank you. Um, so this is a weekly meeting, so there's no agenda. It's super easy to- It's not the big monthly meeting, is what you're saying. It's not a monthly meeting, correct. So we can talk about whatever is on your minds. So there is a few things from last week to um, revisit. We had the Baltimore, Washington open week or it's still ongoing, but it's kicked off with the hackathon and Chaos participated in the hackathon as one of the projects the students could select to use in their work. Um, Sean, have you received any requests from students or? I got zero, but my description kind of went out late, so we can't really blame them. Yeah. What about you, Gary? No, we got zero as well. Valerio and I were on the Slack channel that the hackathon provided, and there was, in general, zero questions from students for any project. So we are not the only one that didn't receive questions. Um, and I have not heard from any of the projects what they used with software. So I don't actually know if they used chaos in their work or not. Okay. Was the was the channel a general like an open channel for all projects? Yes. Okay. So I didn't receive anything. Who knows? Okay. But we were there. We were. We had it. Good job. <laughs> we write well done, everyone. <laughs> We could write a blog post about how we were part of this hackathon and yeah, it could be, design, we left, it could we be left, a de design fiction. We left no questions unanswered. That's true. That is a true <laughs> statement. Uh, yeah. I mean, our response time was just phenomenal. It was no one had zero. Right. Um, all right. That's the update there. Okay, that's good. Um, what else on like uh, events? I mean, I mean, maybe we're in while well, we're in this event space. Um, events. Since we're talking about events, we have to form a <laughs> a committee to plan the next Chaos Con in Europe. Well, okay. Maybe we should do that on the mailing list. A call for help. I know a few of you already volunteered. So we just Who have is volunteered? Is it in the minutes? Planning. Sorry, what? Who has volunteered? Is it in the minutes? I volunteered and I said I would put together the CFP form, which I have not done yet, but I will do in the next next week or so. Okay. Yeah. I'm volunteering again. Okay. Uh, just general help. Is this for organizing the FOSDEM part? The chaos con right before FOSDEM. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to participate in organizing that as well since it seems there's at least a 70% chance I'll be there. Okay. Excellent. I would say at this point, that's my assessment of uh, how things will go. Want me to do sponsorship stuff again? That would be great, thank you. Okay. I volunteer as well. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. I also volunteer. We know that you're very quiet, but I think I heard you volunteer. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Much better. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'll send out an email. I'll take an action item to start organizing.
on the venue, um, Matt, I had asked the leaf there for the information on the Ibis Hotel. Since last week, we talked about renting the space through chaos mm -hmm. rather than in the past where Baturgi had rented the space. Sure. And then doing a sponsorship through Community Bridge as an official sponsorship. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, you I can, and I, yeah, we can arrange that just to get the dollars. Yeah. So I assume if I email the LF and ask about how we want to do this, then we can figure it out. Yeah. Uh, Fayaz, I think, would be the person to get in touch with. Isn't Fayaz for the technical part? He's always been my contact on Community Bridge. I will ask Fayaz about it. I think maybe he just forwards the message to the right people. <laughs> so that's. I'm sure he'll. He'll help. He'll help, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll take that action item. Okay. Yeah. And then action item for Don is to. Is the recycle the one we already have? Right? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Excellent. Cool. Anything else for ChaosCon that we want to plan? No. Nope. Right. Other events that we are going to having representation. Osdem. Osdem, yes. As you mentioned. So we submit a table request for chaos. And it seems like there's a number of people who'd be willing to help at the table. Yep. And then the call for participation in the dev rooms will open later. Okay. Was there anything with MozFest? That? Nothing. Maybe that. I don't know if it's been discussed. No. Okay. Moz, MozFest is the separate event in London in the fall. Yes. But it's soon. It's like in a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need to know on that. All right, fine. I will be going to the Open Core Summit um, tomorrow, actually. Where is that? It's in San Francisco. I'll be there um, representing Chaos and Petrugia. I should get you some, do you have stickers? I, I think maybe somewhere. I need to find them again. Good. good okay. Time. I have, and if you need more, just ping me. Yeah. I'll look for this after the call. Okay. Believe it or not, I gave out, I, I have more poker chips gone than stickers. So <laughs> just as anybody cares, as a metric. No idea why. <laughs> cool. Um, I will also be at All Things Open. Anyone else going to All Things Open? It's next month in Raleigh. I am not. No. What about GitHub Universe? Uh, what is uh, that, George? It's October. Yeah, is it happening? What's that? Is it happening? Is GitHub Universe happening? Yeah. Was there a debate about it? I mean the location. The location is in San Francisco. Oh, okay.
Okay. Any other events anyone is going to to represent Chaos Metrics work? We had talked about, Sean and I had talked about um, the Open Compliance Summit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one of you, both of you, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So anyway, lots of events and chaos being represented there. That's excellent. Uh, okay. Updates from the work groups, unless anyone else has something event related. I do not. BNI common risk value. I'm starting to memorize all of our working groups. Starting? <laughs> you have that down pat by now. <laughs> I know you do, actually. <laughs> so DNI, we were talking, um, or we have a meeting tomorrow with Angela to talk about how to apply the DNI metrics for events to the Linux Foundation events. Everyone who is interested in joining is welcome to join us. The, we're talking at the same time as this meeting is, but tomorrow on the same Zoom channel. So everyone is invited to join. If you want a calendar invite, let me know. And then the second thing we are helping with collaborating on is the Apache Survey Foundation survey. Uh, Chris Kuivas was at the ChaosCon presenting her efforts at the Apache Software Foundation to drive up diversity and inclusion. And one of the activities will be a survey. And so we are working with her on survey design, survey questions, and yeah, just collaborating between ASF and Chaos. And Matt also reached out to the Linux Foundation uh, to see who is potentially wanting to run surveys there or what the effort is there. Yeah, I reached out to Kate and she said a lot of projects have an interest yeah. in this kind of thing. And the hope is um, Matt Snell had shared a link about the Linux Foundation running surveys in the past. And the hope would be that something similar could be promoted kind of at the top level Linux Foundation for projects with an interest. Yeah, excellent. So that's the DNI work group update. What about your collection of surveys? Is that part of the ASF survey? Ah, uh, that yeah, that's where I see that. Okay. So just to get everyone caught up, the idea is as we are helping to put together a survey to look at past surveys run in other communities. And so we started a collection of DNI surveys. Yeah. Okay. I had reached out to Sheree on that. She said a lot of her DNI stuff was on trace data, so not necessarily from survey. So I'll keep rooting around a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you. Sure. Um, here's the document. If anyone knows of a DNI survey in open source, please add it to the list. Great. That's all I know from DNI. Did I miss anything? Don, you were there. Did I miss anything? Do you want to talk about common? Yep, I can do that. Um, I was just pulling up the agenda. So we, as a reminder, we do have a common working group meeting on Thursday, September 19th. So, um, so great. 
if people could attend. Uh, we have been talking a little bit about um, geography metrics. So we've been kind of working on those collaboratively. Matt's been, Matt's been driving that. Um, the other thing that we've been talking about with, um, with Sean are metrics that have already been implemented in Augur that are common metrics that we should probably write down the definition for. So I think Sean was starting to look at um, look at Augur to see what metrics mm -hmm. we could we could do. So that's what's on the that's what we've been talking about, and that's what's on the agenda for Thursday. So we'll talk about Augur, and we'll talk about uh, geographic metrics. Excellent. Thank you. I think I may be the only evolution slash risk person here, other than maybe Manrique. Manrique, do you want to do the evolution update or? Sorry, can you repeat? Son. I, I didn't quite catch that, probably because. Yes, you repeated the question. Oh, oh just <laughs> if you wanted to. <laughs> If you wanted to do the evolution working group update, I think you were there last time, but my memory is not perfect. Yeah, I, I was there, so I don't know if I can make a quick uh, right. uh, recap. So right. basically, we were discussing about the metrics uh, updates and all the metrics that probably were support, supported in Augur and Grimoire Lab too. So basically, it was setting up a document and start discussing all the metrics around there. So it was a nice discussion about if we want to go deeply metric by metric, all the current metrics implemented by the tools and discuss about that or go the other way around and look for use cases and then put that into valuable metrics for for the people. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if that's <laughs> if enough. <laughs> so probably you have more details than me. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I think we're just organizing which metrics we're going to do for release. I think, like you said, the big things are that Augur and Grimoire Lab are going to reverse map the metrics that they have that are most significant into chaos metrics. Um, for the risk working group, the biggest discussions we've had are around software bill of materials. And um, I've reached out to a couple people we want feedback from. There's a few metrics that we have nearly ready for release that we will release. And then there are a bunch of risk metrics that Matt Snell has actually put together in Augur that we're going to be releasing in the risk working group as well. So I, I, see, I see the risk working group being quite active in the next release. I did have a question for, um, for more lab folks. Where, where do things stand on license reporting right now? Is that part of the Grimoire Lab release, or is that a development thing? Uh, do you mean how we are doing license analysis or something yeah. like that inside Grimoire Lab? Yeah, that's something we have added lately. Uh, I think there is a blog post about that that was done because it was uh, one of the Google Summer of Code projects. Actually, yeah. was integrating one, one tool that uh, one of our people in the company has a site as a side project. So starting to do the same uh, infrastructure we are using to analyze commits and contributions How about analyzing just specific things like licensing or code complexity, or start more related with the quality of the code and things like that. Okay. And I think that was great. So thank you, Gail, for paste passing the, the link in, in, into the chat. So you have more information there. So basically it's just release. I don't, Thing is yet even on part of the Viterbi Analytics offering, but it's part of the model for sure. So we, we, it would be interesting to the risk group, working group. Probably we I will talk with Valeria to see if we can have some uh, okay kind of or whatever to showcase. Okay, this is something that the group Marlab also can do. So let's let have the tools in place. Okay, so I see you're using Nomos and Scan Code. Yeah. Are you combining the output of those, or are I, you, you know? I think that could be possible, but I don't know. I'm not the technical person here, but basically it's the idea of you can add whatever tool in the 16 out there to provide okay. more information. So okay, that's it. All right, cool. 
Um, and then have, is there anything at, with Grimoire Lab that is um, interested in the CII badging stuff? So one of the metrics was around CII badging or just reporting the badge information. So I was curious if that was on, on the radar at Grimoire Lab at all. I don't know. I, I will. I will probably need to talk with uh, with Jesus and, and Valerio because they were yeah. they were the people more involved in this, and I know they know about CII and all the yeah. things involved around that. So probably it would be interesting to see if we can align, align nest features or things like that with that. Okay, I would. If the answer is yes, I would encourage you to reach out to Matt Snell, who's also okay. on this call, because he had done that work in Augur. Okay. And might be able to provide some insight as well. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Matt, cool. Matt and I have done some really, Matt's done the work and we've done some really cool things to integrate the, the risk management stuff directly into Augur. So we have some nice, nice, nice risk management pages. Um, thanks to Augur SBOM, which is the former two socks. <laughs> Great. No, no, definitely. Thank you very much. I think it's a good, uh, good to know that someone has already done the hard lines, probably. <laughs> it could answer some questions along the way. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. That's part of the community, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's the idea. Cool. All right. Okay. Anything else from Risk that was very comprehensive already? Value? Update value? Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, let's see. First of all, um, the value group is now meeting once every other week, not every week. Uh, we met last Friday. And um, we have a wonderful new metric that is going to be part of the next release. Uh, the new metric relates to number of job offers and um, salaries associated with the job offers for open source projects. So we'll be working on that in the coming weeks. How did you, have you talked to about collecting that data? Would it be survey data? I... Well, we just have ideas right okay. now. Um, and the ideas that we have really relate to scraping um, job offer sites. So um, uh, there's a whole slew of, um, of job matching sites out there. There's LinkedIn. Uh, those sites have got APIs. So aren't, aren't, the rule, aren't there funny rules on LinkedIn data or no? You're not allowed to scrape it according to their terms of service. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they let, there's ways to do it. They have an API, but their terms of service are that you're not allowed to scrape it and persist it. Okay. And, so. it's, and it's actually more strict than that. Um, you're, not, you're basically not allowed to use it for any purpose. So yeah. you can't, you're, theoretically, you're not even supposed to look someone up on LinkedIn, see that they work for Google, use that in your data point. Because you're, especially if you're a logged in user, I don't know, you should read the terms of service. I, I had to read it when I was going through my PhD because I was. Yeah. Now people was, do this all the time. Yeah, exactly. Right? And <laughs> realistically, it's, um, um, I suspect it's entirely unenforceable from a legal standpoint. Yeah. Because and they're that, basically saying the purpose for which we provide this website is a purpose you're not allowed to use it for. Right. Um, it's a, I, you can have a shirt that says like LinkedIn connects for no reason at all. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> from a from an <laughs> academic perspective, it's really tricky though because there's a lot the, a lot of the ethics discussion revolve around respect for the terms of service, and so it puts it puts academics in an odd position. Yeah, legally enforceable and um, ethical are are two entirely entirely different things. I yeah. I had to pull out. I'm learning that. LinkedIn. I learned that <laughs> big time yesterday. So, I had to pull a bunch of LinkedIn that. data out of my okay. data set for my PhD. Yeah, I believe you. Okay. What about other sites like Indeed, Dice? There are so many sites we can get the data through their API. Yeah, and I mean, I, yeah, I didn't mean to like 
rain on the metric at all. I, I, no, I, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, and like, nor did I. I just, it's like, I think if it was, I think if, if they allowed it, we'd all be doing it. Like, well, I, I think in, in the yeah. case of all the metrics, right, it's to provide any improvement in transparency. So any of these metrics aren't going to solve this issue to the fullest degree or to the hundredth to the nth degree. Um, but if they can improve transparency and actionability in any way, I think that's a, a very positive thing. Right. And I reached out to Danny from Indeed. Yeah. I haven't heard back yet to just see. Now? Hmm? Or, just now or on Friday? Oh, last week. After oh. we had the meeting, I said, hey, yeah. we were just talking about stuff with data that okay. you might love to have some insights on whatever. But okay. I haven't heard back from her yet. Okay. I just thought because she was at Chaos Con. Sure. Was she was involved a lot in a lot of a lot of the talks and like even during the regular summit. Yeah. So that's all from value. Thanks. Excellent. Um, any update on the um, committee that you wanted to put together, Andy? The review? Advisory board? The, uh, the only update I have is I, I have had uh, discussions with Tim Fong at, at Linux uh, Foundation. Uh, he is interested in um, in uh, sort of going down the same path for some activities that they, they are doing internally. Um, their focus is, his focus is somewhat related, but slightly different to, um, to chaos. Uh, he's focused a little bit more high level than, than chaos is. But, but we have been talking about potentially joining forces uh, and we've been strategizing about how to get to you know, different constituencies like a, you know, possibly like a CFO or, or CIO or, or, you know, people who, who do operate at a very high level uh, that he might have relationships with in Linux Foundation. So it's just, um, it's just uh, discussions right now. I don't have anything um, sort of tangible to report. And, and by the way, I do owe everybody um, this draft of the recruiting document. So hopefully I'll get that out this week. Excellent, thank you. So that's the updates from the working groups. We usually also do updates from software. We just had a long Green More Lab session. Um, and I know we have another Augur session coming up um, tomorrow, I believe. Yes. So are there any high level updates to highlight today? No, you'll have to wait for highlights tomorrow. Um, we do have a couple of new sites up. There's a little bit more risk thing. There's more risk information, um, additional API points. So uh, yeah, we'll talk tomorrow. I don't want to take anyone's time up today. Personally, I, just in terms of these weekly meetings with Grimoire Lab and Augur, I think they're fantastic. I'm really glad that they've been added. Um, the discussions are <laughs> really about looking under the hood at the software, which I think yeah. people have been asking about. Um, I think one of the goals that, that um, I'd like to see is, is more people contributing to both of these projects that aren't maybe the core members. And I think these are great ways to, to try to encourage that. So I, I just want to say, I think I'm really happy that these are happening. Um, They've been a really great forcing function for us to explain what we do. So I think, yep. I think they're, they're, they're positive uh, that way. Yeah. So it's just a general comment. Yeah. So, and, and thanks to the Grimoire Lab and Augur folks who are running them, so. I'll just 
find the update we talked about before and copy paste that in here. Um, I had a, do you want to talk more about software? Because I had a question about metrics release. Nope, that's all. I just wanted to complete the circle with working groups and software. So okay. now I'm not sure. Okay. So in terms of the metrics release, I just, I wanted to get feedback from people here. So I, I think there's kind of been implicitly this idea that we would release near FOSDEM, right? At ChaosCon. And I, I think that's always been kind of the, kind of the, the cadence. Um, so I just want to make sure we're still on that, on that cadence, that that's what we want to keep. I think um, reminding us of the deadline for the public display is always good on these calls because I don't remember it already. Yep. So we do a month before. So what's so the day? Pause down <laughs> minus a month. It's like January <laughs> to January 31st. Uh, it's probably written down somewhere, but I should make myself a post-it note. Yeah, ChaosCon is on the last January day. Okay, so and Christmas. Yeah, ideally we have it ready before Christmas, before we yeah, all go. I was kidding, yeah. No, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I don't plan on doing any work between Christmas and New Year's. So maybe and it's on. Are we, are we still, are the, you know, we do have representation from the working groups here. Is this still a, a reasonable thing? Even if it's just a single metric or a two metrics, I mean, it doesn't have to be a long list. I just, I don't want to put, per, I'd love to do a release, but at the same time, I don't want to kind of suggest a cycle that might not be a cycle that's worth keeping to. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I just want to make sure everybody's doing all right. So I know in DNI, we will have probably one or two metrics okay. that came out of the workshop that we did at the last ChaosCon. Okay. So from a DNI perspective, I think it's worth releasing again. Okay. From value, we were just talking about it. I think we have another metric we can add with the job Site. So that's already three metrics we would have. Yep. Risk. Sean, did you have any sense of how many might be part of that release? I, I don't think less than five, but that's largely because we have a set of things that, for example, the badge, the Linux badging metric that are pretty ready to go. We just didn't release them because we hadn't talked to David Wheeler. And then the software bill of materials is a single metric right now, but I think that it actually needs to be subdivided into a set of metrics because it's so, like we could keep the whole SBOM like as one metric that you can download, but I think there are components of it that need to be separated because people have different kinds of questions about software bill of materials. I would say there's the license category questions. I think there's the dependency questions and I think there are safety critical systems questions kind of in those three groups. Okay. And and maybe I even add business viability, but that's that's not an S bomb thing necessarily. So so I think there's a need to subdivide some of the things that are in the giant software bill of materials universe into multiple okay. metrics. So it's it's sort of like cheating to up our metric score. So we're kind of gaming metrics oh, while we're building far. metrics, but, <laughs> but it, I, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't, it's not, so it's not that we're extraordinarily productive or large. It's that the sense we, of what a software bill of okay. materials is, is causing us to generate multiple separate metrics, I think. Okay. So when you say not less than five, that means more than five. Well, it means at least five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So okay. as far as I know, we've got four implemented new right now. So we have the download, um, the license coverage, and the license uh, licenses, which all come from software bill of materials. And then we have the CII. The, but those were part of the original release, like license coverage. Um, yeah. They're different now than they were before. Okay. Um, but that, the, the whole question. Yeah. That is a that's a that's a that's sort of a modification question, not a new metric one. But I think I hear what you're saying because there is there be, some of the tooling and what the data available are different than what we wrote. 
Um, it, it's the same thing with a couple of evolution metrics that have ambiguity that need some clarification, but okay. I don't think we're going to count those as new metrics. Okay. So Matt, you think you would kind of agree here though, in terms of the volume? Yeah, we need to do some revision on the original uh, metrics that we've implemented now to better reflect the implementations as well. Okay. Uh, Don, I think a common is looking at two from what I would understand. I think it depends a little bit. Um, I think right now, probably two geography and responsiveness are kind of the two we've been working on. Uh -huh. However, if we, I would also like to see us have some kind of what I would call kind of uh, easy metrics or quick hits that come out of Augur or Grimoire Labs. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so it would be nice if we had some other other metrics that are things that the software is already using that we've just never bothered defining. Fair. And so I think those might be some quick hits that we can get out of common. I just don't know what those are yet. Okay. Um, and I think evolution is actually going to kind of fall in the same camp in that regard that part of what evolution is looking at is what's actually already deployed in Grimoire Lab and Augur and trying to articulate those. Am I right, Sean? Or yeah. Yeah. And I think evolution is sort of, I think, a giant space where Grimoire Lab and Augur have things to write down. Okay. Um, so, so I guess in that regard, could I encourage the working groups to start your Word document or Word documents, your Google documents to start articulating these things? I, I think that's perfectly reasonable to ask us to do. Um, are we going to try to follow any folder structure or do we just want them linked in? Um, well, the, the workflow would be to just build the Google Doc first. So build it where, I mean, like just wherever, wherever. Just wherever okay. the group can share it. Okay. Okay. Are you talking about the Google doc for the actual metric or the spreadsheet that we had for tracking released metrics? Oh, I was talking about the Google doc, just at least at that comment right there. We could also do the spreadsheet for tracking them like we had done last time. But at this point I was just talking about starting to kind of build a rough structure of what those metrics might be. Okay for the release. Um, but I, I did like the tracking. I can get that. Are you taking notes? I can put that in the notes. Um, okay. Box for each metric. And also, Uh, then Google Sheet. Okay, that's a good idea. I kind of forgotten about the Google Sheet. Okay, so then I have two other questions on this. Um, is is this release version two or is this release version one dot five, or one dot one, or so the, how do we want to think about this? The release version number is the date. So it's released 2020, January. I had always, but like in the, okay. It, like when I, when I put it in the Chaos Weekly, I call it like version one. Yeah. I, know I, I get it, that it's the date, that's okay. You can call it version two, I don't care. I don't care what you call it as a- Do we care though? I, maybe we don't need to care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the date is a better way to name the the versions, okay. in my opinion. I think it's fine that you've been calling it version one because it is the first version. Okay. But going forward, maybe we should be consistent. Okay. So it's 2020-01. The next okay. Day. I can do that. Um, it always just reminds me, right, when Oracle released Oracle 8, I think. They just, like, went from... Oracle 1 to 8, that was in the Oracle 10 maybe even. They just skipped a bunch of numbers to make it a bigger number. So we could actually do Chaos Metrics release in version 10. <laughs> Nobody would know. Um, so then that's fine. And then on the, the evolution of metrics, right? So as Matt had pointed out and as Sean had pointed out, that some of the metrics require a little bit of 
tweaking because the they just need to be refined just a little bit. Do we, is that easy enough to handle in the workflow that we have? The, the modifications? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I mean, it's GitHub, so it's, I think it's super easy. You just have to, I think I've created an issue. I might have even created a pull request. I can't remember. So the metrics that were in that first release are basically just re-released in this new one? Is that right? Well, it's so it's, the, it's, it's, yeah, it's, and these are, there's like no fundamental change to what the metric measures, but there are two different ways to read um, what a contrib, I believe it's, there's a way to read it that it's commits and there's a, and I can't remember the metric and there's a way to read it that it's lines of code. And mine was, this is more of a question of like workflow. So if you're- work, Workflow, I think it's a pull request against the metric. And, I, and maybe there's something we ought to do to, to tag a metric as published, like create a release, so that when we're working on it, there's an awareness that we're changing a public metric so that the discussion about not fundamentally changing the public metric is, it takes place. So in other words, the change I propose is one of making it more clear what the metric is so that developers don't become confused. Uh, if I had proposed a change of metrics or, or commits that fundamentally changed the definition, I think that's more problematic, right? So there's, once it's published, I think the discussions are sort of clarification oriented ideally. Uh, and we should probably have an easy way of telling ourselves that like a GitHub release might be one way. So, so you follow me? Like yeah. brand new metric, no big deal. Cause it's all yeah. new. Existing metric, let's be careful not to confuse people or cause problems. So Kevin, how does that work with what you do? I'm sorry, I was breaking up a little bit. What'd you say? Um, so the idea, so for the metrics that were released in version one, if there's small modifications, then just obviously issue a pull request against them. Um, and then we just recapture those as part of the next release. Is that right? So if, so we just point at them again, we just point at them a second time and that's part of that second release. Yeah, yeah, that would be, that would be correct. Okay, and then any, obviously any new metric is identified as new and you're also told which ones of those to pull. Okay, that's so, easy enough, yeah. One idea that came from this discussion is to keep a version history inside the metric. So at the bottom, we can have version history, initial release with 2019.08, updated in 2020.01 with these changes. And then okay. the description of the changes. And that way we have the history of how the metric evolved. And if anyone looks up the metric, they can see, oh, okay, there's changes I need to make. Right, so I mean, and it could be as broad as things like grammatic, grammatical errors fixed. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that's a good idea. I like that idea. So any metric that's released would have a new kind of header at the bottom, which is a version history. Yep. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. That was really my question. Thank you for that, everybody. No, thank you for coordinating and facilitating and Gary coordinated the facilitate. I just did that little part. Yeah, I, <laughs> all of you. Thank you for coordinating, facilitating, and managing my various things. <laughs> I don't annoy you so much. We're done. Yeah, I, I, I had so many technical problems the last two hours, so I'm just uh, I'm happy to be here. Um, anything else? Metrics release? I'm was looking at our attendee list, and that's incomplete. There's more people on the call than we have. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> Thanks for double checking. I forgot. I forgot to do that. Yeah, I didn't put myself on either. You're on there, Sean. I think. You Thank are. you for ever helped me. Okay. I didn't have a keyboard for the first 10 minutes, so. <laughs> Just a lot. I won't bore anyone else with that story. Thank you details. very much. Details, details, yeah. details. Yeah. All right. Are we finished or is there more? Um, is there anything else anyone wants to discuss? Because we don't have an agenda. I got everything discussed that was on my mind. I got my thing. All right. Three, two, one, <laughs> sold. Blast off. All right. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Later. Have a good evening.